watched The Human Centipede, it was indeed disturbing, but at least from start to finish, it had the element of a narcissistic and vile human being as the villain. The main characters had development, and they were relatable and likable, especially when they were going through that horrific ordeal that I imagine anybody would lose their mind over. I actually give my complete thoughts on The Human Centipede in a review video that I made, and I basically follow along the story so you guys can get a full idea of what this movie was about and how it played out. Watch at your own discretion. Needless to say, it's a horrific but intriguing concept in terms of horror. So, of course, because they have three movies, guess who decided to go ahead and watch the second one right after? <laughs> Good grief! Am I sorry that I did? Like, I don't say that about a lot of films that I consume, or maybe I do now because you guys like watching me in pain. And somehow you decide to suggest me the most vile of these movies known to man or not known to man and they should stay that way. Anyway, let's just say this. If the first one was disgusting, I mean, the first movie was already disgusting. The sequel it was on another level of depravity. There's no adequate words to describe how shockingly horrific and unjustifiably distasteful the second movie is. Like initially, okay, for the first things, the consistent black and white theme throughout the film may have been, maybe they intended it to be some kind of artistic choice to enhance the horror elements but it only made the viewing experience even more nauseating and irksome than it already was. That for some reason, that just rubbed me completely the wrong way. The entire movie feels like a snuff. It's akin to witnessing some kind of crime unfold right before you as if we play the part of the cameras or if we're accomplices to the crime, it feels like something we shouldn't be seeing. And sometimes that can work out to an advantage of a film, but honestly, it just works out the complete opposite to this film. It's so lacklusterly disgusting. The main character, oh my God, he plays the villain, Martin. He is so vile, so depraved, and dare I say, he functions as the only dimensional character, which is kind of sad. But on one end, you're expected to feel sorry for him because of his obvious trials and tribulations via his upbringing. But then for the most of the movie, I feel like throwing up in my mouth whenever I see him on screen. He's a sweet person in real life, don't get me wrong. And I had to look that up because I had to wash the taste of the film out my mouth. It's because Fright Fest did Human Centipede 1, showed Human Centipede 1, that I was interested in appearing in Human Centipede 2 when uh, I was approached. So uh, thank you, thank you very much, Fright Fest. <laughs> I'm talking about but good grief, like I'd be lying, I'd be lying. Like people don't like saying this now because everyone's afraid of hurting people's feelings, but I'm being completely dead ass honest. I would be lying if I did not admit that I observed that he was picked for his looks because they chose the most odd looking, icky person to play this villain. And when he embodies the character as the villain, he really makes himself look really repulsive. I mean, when I was looking at him through the interviews, I was like, okay, this is a nice person. And if you listen to him long enough in his interviews, he actually comes off as cute. He's like a pug. Like if a pug were a human being, that would be him. Not said a bad thing. But then they take his looks because he looks odd. And it just, oh fucking hell, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna try not to lose it while making this review, but goddamn, oh my God. <sighs> Hold on. When I, when I turn to a grown-up, I don't want to be a fat grown-up. I want to be a skinny grown-up. Do you know any fat grown-ups? fingers and breathes heavily and acts so disgusting makes me wish every host of detriment upon him. The way he just treats his victims as though they're not even alive. It just brought me to a place where I saw imaginary and hypothetical justice in a way that was just as disturbing as what he did to these people. I know it's a movie, but they're trying to make us believe, no, this is actually something that's really happening and you're along for the ride, isn't this fun? At least the first villain had some charm and hilarity and you can say he was a good villain or at least at the very least, an entertaining one. The guy in The Human Centipede 2 is just a character I wish with everything inside of me did not exist, just outright. 
One of the other main things about this movie that I absolutely loved, I know, I'm being totally sarcastic right now if you can't tell. Sorry I had to say that defeats the whole purpose of being sarcastic. But was the fact that they completely retconned the idea of the previous movie. It heavily implies an Alban jumps out of the screen with a humongous sign to indicate that the original Human Centipede was just a movie. The irony, I know. But all the things that happened in the first movie were not actually real. And this monstrosity, this aberrant organism and sad imposter of a human being has decided with his innate depravity to recreate what he saw in this movie. It's something that actually gets him off. And we can see him actually doing that to himself in a painful way by wrapping something around his lollygag. Tic Tacs, not Tic Tacs. What are those things that teachers use to put posters on? Thumbtacks, yeah. Something sharp so that he can bleed while he's bashing his meat on the cutting board, if you know what I mean. Sometimes, sometimes people create works and there's a heavy story there, something to get from it. I would know I write a lot of dark stories where horrible things happen to the characters because people can relate to that. People wanna see characters go through something and grow and overcome those things or not, but a story must be told. The character must feel real to them. Even if you're not necessarily rooting for the character, if you're telling it from their point of view, there should be at least some element of relatability there. Some, something there, a little bit, a minuscule amount. But with this character, just nope, nothing, nada. When you can kind of feel like, well, this person shouldn't pick on this character, and that's not fair. If you are actually gonna root for the character, you're gonna root for someone who actually, in your mind, deserves to have these things happen to him because of how he is now. And this is a very manipulative and corrupt technique that seeks to corrupt the audience's values to align with those of the depraved character. You walk away feeling dirty and as though that movie added absolutely nothing to your life. The Human Centipede 2 was so excessively graphic, so unnecessarily so, with no real story to be told by the way, that it led to widespread censorship and restrictions on its distribution. As a matter of fact, in many areas throughout the world, the movie was either changed to remove objectionable content or just banned outright due to its explicit nature. <laughs> That's how bad it was. I mean, in one scene where he is successful and he makes the human centipede, they won't do the poopy poopy thing that he likes. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, listener discretion advised. He does a sloppy job of taking people's ass end and connecting it to the other people's mouth end. He connects them that way. So if some person expels all their belongings that no longer have nutrition, if you know what I mean, the other person gets deep throated with it. And that wasn't happening for him. So he decided to give them a laxative and you can guess what happened. It was so disgusting, even the character in the movie threw up. I hate him! And then to top it all off, the human centipede individual who was at the end that was only connected via the mouth and not the back end, can you guess what he did with it? after she soiled herself with everybody else. I don't think I have to tell anyone because in every way you can think that they want to be the most disgusting they have done. survive and he hit her over the head like everybody else because he doesn't know what he's doing and he's just freaking evil and she is so scared and so manic that she gives birth to her child in a car she's trying to escape in and the infant falls into the wheel well of the car where the gas pedal is and she's trying hard to get out of there so in order for her to do that she has to floor it can you see where i'm going with this baby's down there she has to floor it it's just some sick shit, man. Like this movie should have never been made. I don't even know what the point of it was. At least if you could add some story element in there, I could guess, but without any story element, it's literally like someone decided to just make a snuff and just pass it off as a movie, which it was not. 
It's so disgusting and icky. It reminds me of the website that someone had told me about a while back called Rotten.com or something. And there was an alternate version of it. I think it wasn't called that anymore. And you go on it because you're curious and you're like, after like five minutes of seeing this because your morbid curiosity is there as a human being, you don't want to ever touch it again. It's something really icky about watching it. There's something that is ingrained in us psychologically to steer clear of things like that. It's an evolutionary advantage for us because we know if we see something that has been killed in a certain way or something is wrong with it, either there is a predator around, it was sick, or it can spread diseases. So stay away from it. It's designed to make us feel icky. And there was nothing about this movie that was the opposite of that. It was a waste of time and I regret watching it. It's a movie that was trying to be gross on purpose. <laughs> Stop them tears. You're just making daddy's willy harder. This needs to stop. Where the first one can get away with it, kind of, you can pass it off as just trying to be one of those really horrific situations. Because the victims were actually characters and treated like people that were going through something horrific. This didn't do that. And you want to know what the most wonderful thing is first of all the cops don't get after him you're just wishing this guy will get caught you're just wishing that he'll get caught you watch movies and see from other people's perspectives who are villains them doing horrific things like dexter but you're wishing that he doesn't get caught because there's some kind of morality or relatability there and with this character you're just wishing he would die you're rooting for the people and none of them really make it except for that pregnant woman that no longer has a child, if you know what I mean. But then to top it all off and to make it just the chef's kiss, all of it was a dream. Not only was the first movie just completely fake, didn't really happen. It was only a film in this universe. The guy does these heinous things and he gets away with it because everything that he committed was a dream that he dreamt of when he fell asleep. Because apparently they had no idea how to conclude this awful mess of what they call a feature film. What the hell? This is one of those rare cases where I would say in this instance that this would have been more effective in the form of a novel with the perspective offered from the point of view of the antagonist, where you can hear his inner monologue and the motivations as to what he's doing. I know it may seem as though there's none because he's crazy and he's disgusting and just an evil character, but at least we could argue that a degree of relatability would have been achieved by providing insight into the thoughts and motivations of the antagonist. This is a common narrative technique Technique utilized in novels or books that delve into the perspective of vampires or serial killers and etc. That would have actually worked better for something like this. Not every story is meant to be told in film format and this is one of the examples of that. Human Centipede 2 should not have ever been made and honestly it probably was a waste to have made it because it's banned in most places anyway. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You asked, we answered.